You were sleeping? No, nah, I was having sex. <laughs> I hope you got that. 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 Lord, how did your wife know? Uh, uh, Well, who said it was with her? Right, that's why we like, we hope your wife know. Y'all stupid, man. I'm not messing with y'all, man. You wash your hands? What up, what up, what up? Welcome to GBTV. That's right, Good Vibes Television. I am one of your hosts. I'm your man, RL. You can call me Moan, but as long as Mr. is in front of it, really doesn't bother me. Uh, to the right of me, well, on top to the right, which sounds pretty nasty, my man DJ PRS1. Boom. And on the bottom to the side is the lovely Savvy E. That doesn't sound better either. <laughs> and directly <laughs> underneath me, well, I'm going to let DJ PRS1 introduce that. I don't know if I want to follow up with that, but directly underneath you is my sister. <laughs> 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 anyway, this is Dr. Alicia Gaiadine, oh, a.k.a. my sister. <laughs> um, oh, and tonight oh. we'll be discussing, I'll let Rome tell you what we're discussing tonight, <laughs> Ramon. Uh, we're discussing uh, men egos. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe I heard dating after divorce. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, usually the dating is the reason why you, you got divorced because you were dating outside your marriage. <laughs> but I'm good ah, with dating close. after divorce. So, <laughs> oh. you know, it's all good. It's all good. Right, uh, right, right. How is everyone first and foremost? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How was your week so far, Savvy? I mean, um, I, what you know, with your plans and all that stuff, and you're a, you're a very busy woman, so we know we you got a lot going on. So, <laughs> well, you know what? To be honest, this weekend was um, I had like a photo shoot, right? And a video shoot for my show. Um, I did that um Saturday, Friday. I didn't you know, but hang out with some friends, and um, you Sunday, did what? You hung out. Yeah, I really actually was able to go out okay. and get some food and sit at a table and laugh and joke. Yes, I really did that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, Sunday, I had a lot of um, um, work to do on the computer, catching up on stuff and planning. You know, I had to change my um, event, so I had to do a lot of stuff for, like for that and do a lot of manager stuff. Right. So that's what I was doing on Sunday. Well... I don't know. I've been busy with my station. It's Christmas time, so we're adding a lot of the Caribbean music. Caribbean Christmas music, which we call Parang. Mm. Parang is derived from... Um, Parang music is a bit of Spanish uh, influence, uh, along with uh, the soca and basically Christmas. So it's a real fusion. Um, but you guys got to check it out on the station. It's real nice. It's good to drink liquor, too. <laughs> <laughs> and having a good time and uh, it really embodies the christmas spirit especially for a caribbean person whenever you hear parang parang music um and i guess you know a lot of spanish people enjoy it as well um and this is my sister dr alicia guiding she's our oh. guest tonight and um what you've been up to let you know tell us about yourself well greetings from uh sunny lovely florida where COVID 19 has gone away <laughs> Yeah, right. Our <laughs> governor. So anyone, everyone is welcome to come down here because you know we have just gotten rid of the virus altogether. Yeah, I heard they changed the logo, the the the, the state to come catch it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> the sunshine, we're the sunshine shady state. <laughs> <laughs> All across the board. Wow. Other than that, um, I. I teach middle school. I am, so I'm, and I'm actually uh, working virtually. So I am teaching about 110 young, hot blooded little teenagers and mm. dealing with my own 11 year old on a daily basis who's also work, doing school at home. So it's like that juggling. Act, and that is like my week just wrapped into another week, into another week, into another week, pretty much. 
So looking wow. forward to next week, we are actually off for Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, uh, so hey, Doc, um, can you cook? Absolutely. Okay, I just gotta ask. You know, one hundred twenty something get, students. What you want to get a second wife? Uh, I, no. Uh, she would be my third. You gotta, you you gotta get the, she would be Caribbean my third. You gotta get the numbers right. And eating oh, and our food is like that's the thing. That's that's how we we are together all the time. Everyone is always welcome. So that's one thing. Just okay. like you know, like like Pam, like Regan's wife, always cooking. There's always food. That's just how that's it's the Caribbean thing. It's a I don't know, it's an Indian thing. Involved everything. Are you married? I am not. <laughs> well, she the one came up with the topic of the um today. I yeah, know, like, I the topic of dating after you know, divorce. Really, <laughs> really, for a reason. <laughs> right. So, Mister, uh, what you been up to this weekend? So we won't. Uh, see who me? Yeah, yeah. You didn't. You didn't. So, think, no. You're the last one left. Okay, so uh, I guess I, I've been dealing with this COVID, uh, this COVID situation that we got going on at the job. So uh, we all work at the same place, y'all know it, but it's two companies. And um, so the CDC is still have the same plan in place as far as um, how jobs are to the, the protocol as far as when a person come in contact with someone with COVID. Or, and when they get it and when they go out, their pay and everything like that. Well, companies are now starting to change protocol without letting their employees know. So, you know, employees are going out either for having COVID or coming in contact with an individual who has COVID. And as we know, you're supposed to um, quarantine for 10 to 14 days and then come back to work for a while you're out, you're supposed to be getting paid, okay? Certain companies now are saying if you don't have somebody in your household who has COVID, even though you may have came in contact with somebody on a job who has COVID, you can still come to work as long as the person ain't in your household. <clears throat> what? But what's the difference? Like, I don't understand that. What's the difference? Because you've they been around want... somebody that have it, what is the they difference? don't want to pay anymore. They don't want to pay anymore. You know, when people go off for them 10 to 14 days, you know, it's not like when they get hurt on the job and you only get 60% of your paycheck. These people are getting 100% of their paycheck. Mm. I hope who thought of it gets it first. Well, that money came from the government, from the CARES Act. And so every single state was allotted a certain amount of money. And so the monies were distributed to, you know, different workplaces and and, and schools and public offices and stuff like that. And so that money was allotted to take care of people for um, 10 days, pretty much you can have off and be paid um, with regards to that. However, that ends at the ending of this fiscal year. So that mm -hmm. ends on December, what, 31st? 31st. Um, so it, it pretty much the money at this point is probably running out for a lot of companies because people were probably using the, that leave time early on and they were thinking, okay, well, things would get better. And now that we are in the, the second wave of it, it's, that's just not the reality. Right. So. No. And, um, you know, the companies know, but they're not passing it down the chain to uh, leadership, supervision, and employees. So, you know, been dealing with that the last uh, week, week and a half, and I uh, just really feel bad for people um, who come in contact with someone with COVID or get COVID, and um, if it's not directly from a person in your household, uh, you won't get paid. Um, also, if you get it twice, so if you get it one time, you're getting paid. If you get it a second time, you're on your own. You got to stay home quarantine, and uh, the company will not be uh, giving you any any financial. Uh, that's crazy. 
So been dealing with that and uh and I uh, had a had a good friend and y'all know who she is. Um don't uh prayers out to Miss Kason. Uh she lost her daughter's father last week. Uh he was murdered here in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh our prayers and our condolences go out to her and her family. Right. Let her, we're thinking about you and we're here for you. Other than that, my week has been pretty good. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. You know, the the sex has been right here. <laughs> well, that's why you're not you're not trying to date and after divorce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and hopefully when you said that it was about that regimen going. <laughs> gotta make sure of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so let's jump into that. Let's go here. Let's talk about dive in, literally. Let, let's 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 talk about dating after divorce because men's ego, you know, they just gonna have too much fun with that in the beginning. Let's so let's talk about dating after being divorced. Now I'm a divorcee. I believe Reagan is a divorcee. Hey. I know Savvy is a divorcee. Miss Doc, Doc, are you a divorcee? Welcome to the divorce club, people. We're gonna change the name of the show. <laughs> All right. That, that's when you know you've been living a good life. You have divorcees are us. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yes. That's, that's you a good life. This is the divorce club right for, here. For anybody looking at that, you want to experience about divorce? We're your people to look for. Right. We are here for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King Richard is a one eight hundred divorce club. <laughs> so, so let let me let me ask let me ask the three of you this. All right. Who fault was it? You oh, your one. None of us sitting here. <laughs> I thought it was a bunch. <laughs> No, the the famous two words, not mine. Not mine, exactly. <laughs> not mine. Yeah. Not my fault. Absolutely. It's always on my fault. Right, right. I think I, I can't I, lie because it wasn't mine. I think my my I, I'll take the blame for getting married in the beginning to that person. That's what <laughs> I'll take the blame for. I like that. I like I that. that. I think that's where I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we should let our guests, you know, she's the guest and she came up with the topic tonight. We should let her answer this first question. Oh. Well, I mean, with regards to, I mean, the question is like, whose fault is it? It really comes down to the fact that, and obviously, yes, there are times that it is one person's fault. There are times that it's both parties. Um, and there are times that it really just comes to a halt and a mutual understanding where people just go their separate ways and it is what it is and they're married for all the wrong reasons. Um, I think when people get married, they do not think to get that they're getting married to be divorced or to um, or they're saying, oh, you know, gosh, <laughs> I'm picking the wrong person today, but I'm <laughs> going to do this anyways. Right. No one does that. Um, but you know, being a divorced person and being also uh, a single mom to a daughter myself, it, the, that question has often spoiled my mind because I'm one of those people that I, I put a lot of thought into what I'm doing and, and how I'm carrying myself and how it would look to everyone else and everything else. And so it, it just always boils down to, okay, what is the right, is there a time limit? Is there a certain action? Like, what do you do? And, you know, what is the right thing at that point? Now, you know, I have an ex that that was not a problem for him. So kudos to him that he can, you know, get his groove back during and after the marriage. I mean, it's all good, but it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, for someone like myself and, and many, many other people, it's like you, you think to yourself like, okay, what exactly am I? I'm, I'm one of those people I live with mom guilt. I feel like if I'm having too much of a good time, I'm being a bad mom. So it's like, and I have to, obviously talk myself off that ledge because I'm not because ultimately mm -hmm. when you are happy your child or your children happy. they're mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. and so that's that comes of course with time and some people can 
walk, you know, right out of the courtroom and walk right on into their next relationship. And, and that's great. And then some people need to take time. I mean, personally, I think the time is needed. I feel as if that decompression is necessary um, to really kind of figure things out for yourself first before you allow someone else into your dynamic of whatever it is. Right. So, mm, so are, are, right now, today, Doc, are you, you good for a relationship? If I'm what? Are you good for a relationship today? Yeah, you, would you say you've gotten over your last marriage and, and ready to move on? Well, know, I was over my last, right I was over my marriage um, probably since 2018 when I figured out that my then husband was over the marriage and living his best life. So that's when I kind of went through my own um, transformation. However, I mean, the divorce wasn't final until uh 2020 january of this year but you know mm -hmm. you go through that process of <laughs> you you have to like go through the process and you have to go through whatever it is the highs the lows and everything that comes mm -hmm. with it before you can think to yourself okay i'm in a good place right to then you know have somebody else in my life because I feel as if if you're not if you're still walking around with baggage from the last person it's like that's only coming in to where you're going where exactly you're right, yeah. right and it's just going to create more of a mess for you right. more so than anyone else mm -hmm. uh, okay uh, well, well I ain't even gonna say I'm gonna leave it alone because you Reagan's sister I'm going to be <laughs> that. Oh my God! Right. No, just, hey, I, yeah, I hey, can bro. handle it. Yeah, girl, girl. She can handle herself. She can handle herself. <laughs> she can handle herself. Yeah. Okay, yep. well then, I, no, I can so, handle the embarrassment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, so I want to say the last ten years, ten or fifteen years, um, I didn't, I didn't get to experience this when I got my divorce. But there's a, a lot of my friends who have been gotten divorced the last ten years. They had divorce parties. Did you have a divorce party? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. You know, I look at a divorce almost like it's almost like a death because it really is the end of something that you've actually been a part of. So, you know, people, and I get it. If, and, and there are a lot of people that celebrate death. So in actuality, I can't say those people that are having a party for being divorced that they're wrong. Absolutely not. I mean, if you want to have a party and celebrate the fact that you're free from this person, then go for it. I think people um, people deal with things in different ways. They express themselves in different ways, and they, they, they tend to be able to heal themselves in different ways. And for some people having a party might be the way to go for some people it might be that self-reflection road right mm. hey, uh, dj prs1 yes sir H how long did it take you to bang somebody after you got divorced <laughs> uh, i would say it, it uh, honestly speaking i would say um wow. <laughs> i was <laughs> was I was, I was really he was banging them before the divorce. I would, I would, yeah, right. I would say about a year. See, mine was tough. My my divorce was tough, and I swear, right after my divorce, I really didn't care about uh, relationships. After that, I wouldn't. I guess I don't know if I was out of practice, but I I really was focused on my son, my job, and getting my life together. Um. You know, it's like 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 life after divorce. So I'm trying to get to a new normal, and within that, a year went by before I, you know, I even started dating. Like people had to drag me out the house. Um, certain people on this page is the one that had to drag me out this house. <laughs> stop! 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 Yeah. Stop! So you are telling us, yeah, that you you was jerking off for a whole year. I wouldn't. I don't even think I was doing that, man. Damn. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was so busy. I was depressed. I went through depression. I went through all kinds of crazy emotions. 
Um, mm. Not so much because- I can vouch for that. Right, not so much because of my wife, it's because of the rut she had left me in. I was on the bottom, I had a child to take care of, a, a, a infant in fact, because he was only a year, no, two years, something like that. He was only two years, and um, so I'm still changing pampers, I'm still getting formula, stuff like that. Um, he's not even in uh, preschool at this point, you know, and all of that stuff. I'm by myself, I got a job that the man was a police officer, so that job demanded a whole bunch of stuff. Babysitting issues, man, it was, I was out of my head with a whole bunch of stuff. So that stuff was there in, in my mind, but at the same time, I was, I had a lot of support from, believe it or not, my ex-wife's family. And they would always be over at the house. They would be helping me with him and stuff like that. So I really was still kind of, you know, in involved in that. And again, I didn't realize the time went by so fast. Like the year went by quickly. And I didn't realize that, oh, wow, it's been a whole year. Like it just, it felt, it, it ever, it, it, it felt fresh, you know, right after the year. Mm. But, um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, it's weird to say it, but yeah, I, I didn't have any kind of fun. Wow. Okay. Sad. Got divorced when he got divorced. Hmm. Oh. It what was happened? A whole family intervention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Savvy. Yes. All right. So, uh, who nice dick was you uh, jumping up and down on <laughs> after you got divorced? How long did it take? Five years. And get the fuck Five out of here. Hey, look, look if, if we're going to do this show, we got to be <laughs> honest. This show is about integrity. That wasn't even a, 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 a nightstick. That was probably like a cobweb broom or something. Yeah, uh, come on. <laughs> D DJ PR one said 12 months. Now you've you given us five years, man. Five years. Stop this. Uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we have to cut this program. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> please, please, Savvy, explain five years. Um, like when you when your mind is somewhere else, it's like you're dealing with stuff. You're going through the um the whole thing of being separated. Like for me, I can't talk about every for everybody else, but you you're dealing with a whole bunch of things. And just because it was five years, don't mean I still didn't have feelings for this person. You know, so it was like you're dealing with that. I'm a person that I don't like to be in something else when I have feelings for somebody else. So I had to make sure that all that was gone before I can even open up to somebody else. So I was always on oh my God. Then, you know, I had children to raise and I'm working at that job from sun up to sun down just to make, you know, to make money. So yeah. I wasn't thinking about that. And yep. then I'm trying to get myself, you know, um spiritually right. And, you know, and time, so, time to heal. Yeah, so I was doing going through all that, and then like before you when you look up, it's like, dang, it's five years. Right, and that's that's the thing. The, the time goes by so fast that, uh, like, people intervened for me to get back on the social scene. It was like I was so stuck, I was so ingrouted in what I was doing that that my mind wasn't focused on on dating or none of that stuff anymore. <laughs> I used to be yeah, in my own just, little, my own little yeah, work. Yeah, I was just concentrating like, on work. Right, it was like work. Going to the mosque, coming home, dealing with my children. Right. I was in my own little world. Me too, and that's that. that I can safely say, so I was in that bubble where 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 I was. It was just me and my kid, and I had everything I did was for that. I had to forget what I was going through because I had him to raise. Thank God I had him to raise because I had an easy answer on my hip if I wanted to. You know what I mean? Um, being a police officer, um, but I was God. You know, God puts things in in perspective for you and 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 the fact that i had to be there for him and to to, to show him how to be strong and all that kinds of stuff it was it, you go through a lot you go through a lot and 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 it's i think it's different um for, for for most males okay let's say a male majority of males when you're going through a divorce you don't have the kids the difference with me i had my son so that was what the difference was for me is that I, I was I, I was the one taking care of a child. I was as a single parent now, I became a single parent, and it was kind of e easy because everybody came knocking on your door. But at the same time, I didn't want any and any female around my kid. You know, understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's the other thing. Um, you couldn't come to my house. No, nope, none of that stuff. Um, so if, if whoever came around him or got to know him, I had to be, you know, somebody who wouldn't hurt him. 
You understand what I'm saying? So it's, it's one of those things. And I had to have somebody that he can look up to or stuff, you know, basically stuff like that. I, 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 so I went through a whole bunch of stuff and I didn't have the time for it. I was, I don't know if I was just being lazy, but I didn't have the time for it. I was just focused on what I was doing. <laughs> but I think that was, that's the difference is it's because I had a child um, with me. That's, I wasn't the freak, you know, man, y'all are some, y'all are some really good people, man. <laughs> Y'all really y'all, man. Y'all some, y'all yeah. some good people. Y'all some good people. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> I left the courthouse. We got divorced. I left the courthouse. I went straight over Jamie's house, and I got me some. <laughs> yeah, I had to pick the kid up. That's probably why. <laughs> she was in school. She was in school. Oh, she. You know, yeah, she was in school. Divorce court was only like 90 minutes. I left D. I looked good. I had a fresh cut when I had hair. I was in the <laughs> I had, yeah. I my, yeah, I had my I had my uh, um church jacket over my suit. Right. Stopped, right. By, stopped by Jamie house and got some. So I was banging about 30 <laughs> minutes after I got divorced. Mike McCoy, <laughs> Mike McCoy's on the on the live, but he posted on the Cole, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the Cole from Martin. Cole. He sees it. Yeah, man. Nah, so I think for me, right. Uh, as far as relationships, I couldn't get into a relationship. I tried to, I tried right. to, but uh, I couldn't do it because um, I was so, me and my wife, me and my ex-wife was childhood sweethearts, high right. school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. So um, I had this whole thing like, man, I mean, I had some like gorgeous, beautiful, smart women who wanted to be with me and I wanted to be with them too. I, I thought I wanted to be with them, but it was just sex. But I thought I wanted to be with them because I had women coming at me. I had, uh, I met this girl at the gym. She was a doctor. She was down here going to school, but her uh, her main school was up in Philly. She had to right. take some courses down in Hopkins. Beautiful girl, beautiful body. Sex was amazing. <laughs> but after about three weeks, I would find myself disconnecting. You know, like she'd be like, are you on your way? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm getting dressed right now. The whole time I'm laying in bed underneath the covers. And I would hang up the phone and go to sleep after I told her I was on my way. And mm. it was like that for about 20 other women throughout the course of that year. And I was like, man, I'm really, I'm really something wrong with me. I'm either I'm depressed or I just, I couldn't figure it out. But then I, then it came to me. It's like, you know, I really can't understand why these women want to be with me. Right. When my wife didn't want to be married to me anymore. And I was like, damn, I got it bad, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why my marriage didn't work, why my wife didn't want to work on our marriage as much as I wanted to work on it. But I got all these wonderful women who, for whatever reason, they want to get to know me and want to grow with me. But I wasn't interested in them that way. I just I just couldn't get past my wife didn't want to be with me anymore. So mm -hmm. it was about 20 or some women uh, the first year. And uh, like I said, I would do that. I, I, the first two weeks would be cool, man. We'd be out there having a good time. I'm, we have a sex. Sex is great. I, I don't date bums. So she was a phenomenal woman working, school, whatever. And uh, after about that third or fourth week, I would disconnect. I, I wouldn't have much to say on the phone. Um, I would... I would bluff them on dates. I'm like, oh, my bag, something came up. You know, because this is when, you know, cell phones weren't that big back then. Right. You know, so, you know, you can't get a hold of me. It is what it is. <laughs> and, uh, it, it took it took about, it took me about, I don't know, about three years to get out of that rut. You know, um, I was still having sex. I'm not like, like you two. I, I ain't no saint. I was out here fucking, you know, but... <laughs> As far as, I guess, uh, open up and being honest and letting somebody in, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it for about three years. I just, I just couldn't do it. It just, it, it my divorce. It, I, I felt embarrassed for one, because a whole lot of people said we were too young to get married. I was in the Marine Corps. That was a knock. People were like you shouldn't get married while you're in the military. She was two years younger than me, even though we've known each other since middle school. Um, 
uh, it, it was just so many people that it was trying to talk us out of it. Right. And we did it anyway. And the first year, man, the first year was fine. The first year was awesome. We had a house. We had multiple cars. We had money. We had good credit. So things were going good. Then going into that second year, things, you know, weren't looking too good. And then coming out of that second year, that shit crashed, man. That shit was like motherfucking Lindenburg, man. That shit was on fire. <laughs> People, that shit was awful, man. And the divorce, it was, I guess it was like, oh, we get divorced, but it, I was so embarrassed. We had a big ass wedding. We got married at my my, my family's church. Mm -hmm. Everybody's there. And I'm just thinking like, oh my God, I'm a failure. My mom and my pop, they've been married for 20 plus years. Yep. You know, I and I'm like, the same oh, thing. like I, my, my whole thing was, and I think I didn't, I went through that even while I was still married and, and, and things weren't working out. Like we could have been divorced a long time ago, but I went through that, but mm -hmm. like, no, man, I can't, I'm going to be a failure at my marriage. Blah, 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 blah. You know, um, I'm not, I don't want my kids to grow up without mom and dad. Cause that's not how I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I want to be a guy with, 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 with kids here and there, you know, and I turned out to be that guy. <laughs> and yeah. I'm fine hey, with it. Club. I didn't want yeah, to be the child support people. guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of them things. And it's like, wow. But I realized, you know, getting on that side of the fence that, yes, it's bad, but at the same time, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. You know what I mean? It wasn't anything to be embarrassed about. There was a lot of welcoming friends on that side of the fence, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, bro, welcome aboard. We, we've been here waiting, you know? They, we yep, they were happy to see you fail, man. That's what it is like. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, for me, I don't think it was like, it was never an embarrassment type thing. You right. know, my thing was like, I can't, like, you got, you got to go. It was more of a situation like that with me. So it was more right. like, because I was like in my twenties when I got married. Right. And to be honest, like I did, I got, I was living with my family. And then when I got married, I moved in with my husband. So I never had that time in the middle to head to myself. So right. it was kind of welcoming to me to be in a place where you can be on your own, be by yourself, do things and think for yourself and all that. So it wasn't, I didn't have no embarrassment at all. You know, um, I have a like, small as my family is, we really tight. So it's like, we talk about majority of everything. You know, of course, like when I'm going through the problems in my marriage, I don't talk about that because, you know, my grandma always taught you, like, you never do that. You right. never talk about what goes on in your marriage until you're done. So when I was done, I was talking about everything. Like, this is what we was going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My brother was like, what? Like, really? You know? So, yeah. but you made, a, you made a statement about who um, fault it was. I really feel like um, it's always, to me, it's, it's, every, it's both sides. It is. Yeah. It's never um, just that person and just that person. And I know when we tell our stories, we only tell our side, you know, <laughs> but it's always, it's a the only side that matters. Right. <laughs> At this point, yeah. To be honest, to be honest, we all gotta um we all have our problems in our relationship, you know, right, and right. you have to man up to it. You have to say, This is what I did, this is what you know, this is the things that I did wrong, and I could have done this better, or things like that, and, and vice versa. Um, so for me, I think it was like a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanna say, you know, I wanna pat myself on the back. I did try harder because it was like twenty something years. But then it was like after a while, just like you can't do this by yourself. You can't right. fight by yourself. Right. So you you tap out after a while. You hit that bell. Like I'm going to my my corner. And when I went to my corner, I stayed there. And I ain't want to come back out. But yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. I don't have a, a middle ground. I'm in it or I'm out. I don't know that middle ground. Right. So when I'm with you, I'm with you. But when I'm done, I don't care what you do. It's not gonna bring me back. Yeah, yeah. And you know what this thing this things in my 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 first merge that I, I wish um I didn't do. You know, I wish I didn't, you know, buy her a house. I wish I didn't pay the mortgage on time. I wish I wasn't faithful. Um <laughs> I wish I didn't come straight home from work, you know. <laughs> I wish I didn't cook dinner about three, four times a week. <laughs> you know, I just wish I wasn't a good guy. That's what I wish I wasn't. I wish I was a good guy because that's the only thing I did wrong. I was a good guy. And it seems like good guys get shitted on. I should have been one of these ignorant motherfuckers out here 
calling <laughs> on her out of name, cheating on her, having kids on her. I should I should have uh, had late notices on the cable when she hey, come God, home. Mm-hmm. We, got that, we got that therapist on speed dial because I think we need it. <laughs> right, you know. <laughs> That's what, I so mad I about That's what I wish I didn't do, you know? <laughs> I wish I wasn't a good husband. Maybe my marriage, I'll still be married to the motherfucker. But no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> you know. I wish so, I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. <laughs> right, right, right. So, Mrs. Goddick, like, how is it um, for you now? Like, do you try to date? Like, do you try to go on dates? Like, how is this? I mean, especially at this time. Uh, well, okay. So interestingly enough, I I went through my my entire I, I would call it my transitional time while even being married because we were completely like living a separate life, um, just under the same roof. And mm-hmm. then of course I I was the one that took the initiative because if it was up to my ex we would continue living under the same roof and living a lie to everyone else. And he was quite okay with that. Um, I wasn't. And so when I, like you, when, when I'm done and I tap out, I, I, I did it for 11 years and it was like, I was tired of being one in the relationship by myself, two in a marriage by myself, three, just kind of pretending to everyone that everything's great and okay and normal. And, you know, Regan definitely knows about that. Like we've been there on, on vacation and I would be like a very good wife when in actuality, I probably wanted to stab him. But, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, I, I, I think to myself, I'm like, listen, you are out there, you are walking the streets. You are breathing some air. Honey, you made this out good. You made out really, really good. Because I gave you that life. Because I could have taken it a long time ago. <laughs> so um, with that said, going through the the divorce went, took almost a year to really kind of go through and, and get everything situated and sorted out and be finalized. And during that time, that was a time where we were actually then physically separated, which was great. And I really, at that point, started to mentally and emotionally, I started to heal. And I knew, I knew that even before that, that this was over. And now my life has to be with my daughter and, and you know, everything has to be about her. So I did have... Um, Neutral people set me up on a date with someone, and, and that's the person I've been dating like since uh, July. And so, but is, it easy? And, is it easy for you, like, because you're a single was, mom and stuff like that? In the beginning, I have to say it wasn't, and which was all on me. I was very apprehensive. So, we, we probably spoke on the phone for over two weeks before we even like met each other and we live on separate coastlines like I live on the east coast he lives on the west coast we're both very much involved in our jobs our careers and and which is good and and I think that's perfect because I consider myself now older in this game I'm not like a you know a hot-blooded 20 something year old or a teenager that I need to like have you know someone on me like every single day i'm Mm -hmm. i'm okay with that and i think it gives it brings about a great balance in a relationship it gives both of us the time that we need away from each other to appreciate the other person and even to just get to know that person in those small chunks and so you know we um it took a long time for him to for me to feel comfortable even bringing him around my my daughter because I, I needed to feel comfortable. I needed to feel as if, because my number one priority is her safety and her being safe and her being mm-hmm. happy and her being comfortable. So it's like, you know, that's where you think, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? What if this doesn't work? What if this happens? And so it, I think it's, it's baby steps, but it's how it's handled. 
um, that's mm -hmm. important. And being respectful to, you know, yourself and to your home, home to your to your your family, that is like important of how you move on and how you transition with someone else in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, so. So how he, did he, how he's, he's hurt? He, he got to be hurt. He on the West Coast, you said. He is. Now you too fine to be on another coast. I'm gonna tell you now. If I was me and you were talking on the phone, shorty, I shit, we nah. I'll be I'll be on the same coast. I just I, I, look. I can't do you too fine. Well, I, I'm pretty sure he's uh, thought about that. Mm, I'm, I know he had. He, <laughs> so hold on. You said you met him in July, right? He, he done stocked yeah. up on a lot of lotion. Wow. Yeah. You see. So let me. So so it is possible to find COVID penis and be happy with it. COVID penis. That's right. I'm happy for you. I've, I've been telling people it's, you just got to make sure you be safe about it. Oh my gosh. You find some COVID penis that's been quarantined, honey. It is uh -huh. the best. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Oh my God. So, so I guess, you know, going back to, to explaining it to, to your daughter, um, how how would how did that go? I mean, how do you explain it to to the kid and to the child? Okay, I'm dating somebody else. Um, how do they feel about it? You know what I mean? It, it's it's one of those things where where you know kids always want to see their parents back together. So it's one of those things. I know when I when 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 I started and and you know my wife now Pam came around and we started dating and stuff like that and I introduced her to Jagan. He was just happy to have a, 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 a another mother figure in his life that he he just clung to her real like you know like straight off the bat. Um, but I know a lot of kids act differently about it. Well, mm -hmm. my kid is very what she's extremely smart, very perceptive, um, very in tune, and she's an eleven year old that is like years beyond beyond like her knowledge and, and what she comprehends and how she speaks. And so seeing um, her dad and I go through, you know, we weren't fighting there, you know, cause I, I never wanted to have like arguments and things like that, but she knew uh, it was a very unhappy home and unhappy relationship and she has the most amazing relationship with both of us and um it just took steps it was you know it wasn't like hey i'm dating this person it was oh this is a friend and you know it's almost like you baby step them into this person and and it's it's for even the sake it's mostly for the sake of her mm -hmm. that you know she needs to feel comfortable of how and when she sees this other person and so for her she hardly ever sees him because she's with her dad every other weekend and so i make plans then but if she does and and i don't i also don't believe in lying to her i don't believe in um keeping her out of the loop of everything so i do allow her to at least like See him so like maybe if he comes to visit he might come the day before she has to go to her dad's okay and that way and they actually have like such a really cool relationship just they'll sit and play games and so it's it's like and she's the kind of kid that will sit and have a conversation with a grown-up and be completely completely fine so so I guess I guess the other question, the question that comes up after that, how is the ex taking it? You know, because <laughs> you you know, and, and and I've talked, I've spoken about this, you know, to mom before, but you know how my ex found that, how my ex carried it um, after finding out about Pam and finding out that I was that I was getting married to Pam and stuff like that. I went through, oh. I want to say, a hurricane for damn near 18 years <laughs> um so how 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 does that uh, how does dad or the ex-husband take is taking the news about you dating? does he, he even know anyway because one it's none of his business 
Right, right. I know, but I know, out that. have he no. given you any flack about it? He's no. Out right now. no, he he it it's not something that was even addressed with him. Right, right. Because it's not something I don't think I need to go to him and say, Oh, so can I date this person? Do, do you approve? Well, see, I didn't. I didn't do that with, with, with you know. I don't really give either, a crap but, but what he thinks. When, when no she one does. Up, man, she but the bottom up, line is. Ready to come back. Oh, my God. The, the bottom line is I would always do what is right for my child. Right. He is my number one. Right. And that's the difference between her dad and I. Because if he was doing what was right for her we probably wouldn't be divorced today. Right. So at the end of the day, you know, it's like you have to, I would always make the decisions with her first. Right. And with him, I don't see the need in having any conversations with him whatsoever about who I would like to date or right. be around right. because it's none of his business. He and could be with 10 girls right now. Right, and it's over. It's um, not my problem. Savvy, how about you? How, about, how, how was it? How was it for you with your ex when you started dating again? Or did, did you have? Well, you were five years later, so you really must have got over it. I don't know. But. Hell yeah! I, he probably was hoping you find somebody. <laughs> I, I don't know, man, because you know she five got. Years? I don't know. Savvy always got a good snack. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the excellent ones. The excellent. See? I mean. He's the type of person to believe, believe it or not, he's so nonchalant. He probably, he didn't care. Oh. Long as he, yeah, he didn't care. Like, it's like, long as if he called me up and asked me to do, if, if I, he, if I did what he asked me to do, he, he didn't care. You know, if he called me up and be like, I need you to stop at the store. That's all he worried about. He didn't care about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and when I'm doing it. Right, he, right. He just like that. What about you, Mo? Who, me? Man, look. Uh, so you know, I was in the same boat as you. I was in the same boat as you, right? You know, uh, I didn't need to. I ain't never felt the need to check in or let them know, but I already knew. Um, and I'm. This is kind of a conceited thing. See, I know how I am when I'm in a relationship with a person. You know, what I'm saying you can ask my wife. I'm a really, really good man. I am. Um, uh, I don't know what you, I don't know what men would call it. Women would call it. You know, yeah, he, he kiss and hug on me and that. But I'm very, I'm very passionate. You know what I'm saying? If you're my woman, you my woman. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just a very. Once you uh, make it the queen status. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a family oriented man. You know what I mean? Right. And you my, you my woman. I'm a, I'm a pinch your ass. I'm a kiss on your neck. I'm gonna bring you flowers. I'm gonna do all that cool shit. You my woman. You're the only one I have to do it for. So when the relationship ended, I really. Was like, well, fuck it, you know. I don't think she going trip because she happy smoking weed with these niggas. You know what I mean? I'm over here trying to find a woman. These women are these women. It's like they knew I'm a, I'm a good guy, so I don't have that issue. Right. Now, the issue come when I'm in a relationship longer than three months. If they see me with it, like, like, yo, my ex saw me in the movies with a chick, and she didn't even sweat it. She said, "How long you been talking to her?" I said, three weeks." She didn't even sweat it. Right. When she saw me with the chick seven months later, that's when she was tripping like, right. oh, he's serious. Like, she getting, she getting my goods. He's treating mm -hmm. her the way he was treating me. Now it's a problem. Right. Because she, <laughs> she know how I am. You know what I mean? So that was, you know, uh, then, you know, the baby mama issues. Then you got the child support issues and all that other stuff comes in, right? And the one thing I will say, the thing is funny is that, you know, this generation is so crazy because divorce is just, it's just something It's like, you know, turn on the TV. It's just something that happens so often now. If not divorce, people separate and they're not together. Right. So my wife and I has been, we have been married 11 and a half, almost 11 and a half years. We've been together 13 years, be 12 years next, next summer. Right. The wonderful thing about it is, is that when they see us still happy and they see us still growing and still uh, succeeding in life and that the kids love us, the kids respect us, mm -hmm. the kids are happy, the kids have, right. you know, even though 
They didn't drain my pockets of child support. I never lost anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? My family have never went without. You know, my wife don't complain about anything. I don't mm-hmm. complain about The kids don't complain about anything. I used to love walking into the courthouse, man. And, you know, well, in the beginning, I did. But as the <laughs> years went, man. Yeah, in the, in the beginning, I did. Right. But as the who years did, who went, would? But as the years went by. Right. You know, and the kids got older. And, you know, you're in front of the judge, a different judge, whoever it is, and they're looking at the, the documents over the years. And the 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 way they view our relationship, it, it changes in the courthouse. Because, you know, saying, so, uh, hey, Mr. Lindsay, are you still married? Yes, I am. To Miss, and they say her name, say, yes, I am. Are you still at this address? Yes, I am. Are you still doing this? Yes, I am. Okay. And, you, and I take a look at her, and she ain't married. In fact, that's a different boyfriend that she done brought to the courthouse with her over that span of time, mm-hmm. right? And they see that she done had several different jobs. In fact, her cell phone number ain't even the same. It's been about, I think she had at one point, it was like 10 different numbers she had. Yep. And they just, is your address this? And no, the address changed about five or six times. Mm-hmm. And I just sit there and like I said, in the beginning, it was horrible. But over the course of time, you must I my I start showing up. I'm looking better. You know, I'm, I'm look. I'm, I'm 41. You know what I mean? I don't lost my hair, but I look good. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking different. I'm coming in there. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm shaking people's hands. I'm, hey, 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 what's up, what's up? And that, and, and she can't do that. She, Her and that dude, they can't, they bombs. I hate to say it, but they bombs. She's sitting over there going, asshole. Yeah, it's, it's the <laughs> sweetest revenge. It is the sweetest revenge ever. I encourage people... Stay strong, be be just stay positive because yeah. over a period of time you'll see that you'll see uh uh just how impactful you have been on their life. Right. Later so on down me, the road. So, so let me say let me say this, let me ask you that. So you you're saying that and in my head I'm like that like trickles into like the male ego. Oh, we got away, man. Oh, we got away. I was about to say, we only got four minutes left. <laughs> we got four minutes to talk about that. Had to be savvy. Uh-huh. <laughs> the man, you know, the man. I mean, my whole thing is, you know, you go into the courthouse and... What a transition. You know, like you said, in the beginning, it was not good. But now, you know, I'm popping my collar. You know, I'm, walking, I'm kicking in the air when I go outside and stuff like that. You know, yeah. it just takes me back to the whole day going thing of male egos. Because, I mean... Like I said, I always speak for myself, um, and some women can agree. Like when we go through divorce and go through stuff like that, we not, you know, we not looking at them like, oh, you know, look at y'all, you know, it divorce is like a sad thing. And like she was saying yep. earlier, like it's it's like a death. You know, you spend years with this person, you grow on with this person, you develop it and all that, you got kids with this person. So even if I see them ten years um later, my whole thing is I wanna see them do good. As you know, as myself. So no, if we to keep going to the cool house and stuff like that, I'm not fuck worried it. about how many addresses they got. I'm just hope thank you that you're still alive and whatever the case may be. So I'm, I'm, I'm only choosing me back to the male ego. I'm only happy that they still alive <laughs> for our kids. Fuck them. The only death that happened to me during that marriage was my credit. It was the death <laughs> of my credit. That's right. Fuck them. You made damn right, my ex. Yeah, let me tell you something. I got two and a half more years and I'm done with child support. I can do them two and a half years standing on my head in the corner. She better get her her tubes untied and find another sucker to take care of her for 18 years. That's why I got an ego, damn it. I mm-hmm. made it. Yes. I made it. We're going to continue that on a later date. The male and their, <laughs> their fragile, fragile eagles. Because they right. got one and, they, and it's big. Yeah, right. I made it. That's right. I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I see her, I, I hope she's getting out of Uber. You know what I mean? And have a hard time paying. Wow. I hope the, and I hope the only bank account she can get is cash at. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ego and bitter. And I don't care. I see. Ego and bitter and salty. And you hope she gets COVID. I hope she, I hope she gets COVID. <laughs> 
I don't care, man. Really, look, nobody pumping him up. He does that for let himself. Me, look, I mean, you don't need nobody pumping that man up. Hold on, hold, see, see, people, see, yeah. they, they, people under this this false pretense that you gotta grow up and be the bigger person. Man, fuck that. I, I can't. Agree. I'll be the small person. I, 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 I definitely small agree. Person. Right. Okay. Yeah. The hell that I went through. The hell that that man went through. Mm -hmm. Man, shit. I hope she get denied for food stamps every time she applies. <laughs> I hope she's fucking hungry. I hope she get one of those boxes that Trump said he was going to send after he canceled food stamps, man. I fucking hope that Hurricane come to the neighborhood and only get her house. I hope that she can, I hope that cable never work in her house. I hope that her Wi-Fi is shitty. I hope that her car insurance stay gap forever. I hope that I don't care. Shit. <laughs> you say, damn. Forever. Now, now that's how you really feel. Now, I hope that she can only afford liability. I hope that she can never afford, afford full coverage on anything. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my I hope the Center don't give a shit. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I hope she never get a PS5. I hope she never, <laughs> ever get a, rock in a PS3. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm dead serious, man. And, yo, the things, the things that <laughs> men have to go through to to live after a relationship, especially when children are involved, is that's right. That's right. It's it's like we don't have any rights. So at this point in my life, at 41, I take a look at my kids, and my kids are beautiful. They're intelligent. They never cause me any problems. I've mm -hmm. been there. Long. I've never canceled. When I was supposed to pick them up, I never called and said I couldn't make it. I never took my kids back early. I always called and see if I can get an extra day or two, even mm -hmm. though I, she might say no. Uh, so fuck her. I made it, bitch. I made it. <laughs> I made it. So, you Rick James. You, you Rick James. So you remember in the beginning you were asking, you remember you were asking no. when you celebrate your divorce? Uh-huh. Right. He's going in now. As I'm a man, now, as right? I think, man, as a man, when you celebrate, is when your kids make the 18 years old, 19 yeah. years. Old, that's when you that's celebrate. The line. <laughs> I'm a same but you know, that, That's right. That's crazy because like women and men see divorce separate. I mean, in a different light. Yeah. Right. Like you're seeing it like I can't stand. I I can't. And we see it so totally different. Like yeah, so because, yeah. because you know, for y'all, for y'all, for y'all, I mean. You know, and you better not say it's easy because it's not. No, 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 no. I'm not going to say it's easy. But I'm, what I'm going to say is, women have it better as far as choices. You can, you y'all have a. Wait a minute, hold. Y'all get to choose. Y'all get to. I think you pick. need to chime in on this, ma'am. Because did you hear what he just said? Come what? on, Doc. Come on, chime in. Y'all got to eat. Y'all get to. You, look, look, you picked a man in July who lives over in the West Coast. You got to pick that. Me and Reagan have to pray for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We he got was, to, and he ain't gonna be on the West Coast. And he was praying for somebody side. in the East Coast. Yeah, he's gonna be on the West side of town. <laughs> it's different for women. Like it's, when you're it's not out, though. You guys I'm, think it is, but it's I'm, but it's it's not because you know what? Like for you, for you, when you got divorced, you walked out of that courtroom and you really had zero responsibilities besides financial responsibilities. Am I right? Hell no, I'm with a black woman. Did you? <laughs> yeah, but you did not, you did not walk out of that courtroom and then go home to then take care of a young child and have to be with that child day and night, living day and night. I went through a point where, and, and you guys think that women have it easier. And, and we do look at things differently because of the fact that we seem to be the ones that are always responsible, that are always holding on and being responsible. Now in Regan's case, it was completely different. And I actually, because I'm his sister, I lived through that with him. And I've seen it from with my own eyes that he was left like a woman in the relationship with like a the child bitch. to then take care of, <laughs> like a bitch. Exactly. You know, I went through a part where we sat and went through a divorce. We had child uh, custody 
uh, arrangement sorted out. And it was damn near almost a year before I had to force my ex to live up to his agreement. Now, if I was a crazy bitch, I would be in that courtroom saying, listen, judge, uh, he hasn't been here, there. She hasn't spent a night at that house. Not one time. It's been a year. How about you owe me a big fat check? Mm. You know what? My child was my number one and God has blessed me with life and health and I can take care of my kid, but she needs her dad. And that's the one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to hold his. That's the only reason why this nigga is alive. <laughs> because he needs to be her daddy and that's why it's like you stayed alive this whole time not because you can go out there and be joe cool but because you're gonna be a dad and i'm gonna hold you responsible i don't need a check from a year ago that's i'm good with that but you're going to start being a parent and it has been life-changing across the board where it's now i've cut myself out and i've forced him and that was the biggest battle was forcing him to live up to a legal document that he signed off on mm -hmm. and i did and we sat there and agreed to together so you know it's like now seeing her every other weekend taking her out for dinner once or twice for the week that's no kind of responsibility you know she's sick at night she needs stuff in the morning. Who's getting her ready for school? It's mom. It's always mom. It's the person that is there full time mm -hmm. that's taking on that responsibility. So it is different. You know, we look at it different. We look at the, the, the divorce in a different lens, with different lens. We look at dating and moving forward. And really and truly, it's really not all women. I mean, I've seen some complete disasters where women just put their kids on a back burner and it's like they need to now live their best life right and you know there there are a lot of them and yeah, I, I didn't really you know, know i didn't really before. start living my life until my children got older exactly. because like she was saying like you gotta be responsible you gotta be there for the children so and then when my children got older i went through a period when i was sitting around like so what i'm supposed to do now because it was always about them you yeah. know, until I one day I, it, a light bulb was like, okay, so you, you gotta start doing you because you lived your life with your kids That's and right. you're still always gonna be a parent. That's never gonna go away. But that time when they really, really need you, and they really need you. And it, you know, I did all that. I was there. Like I said, I lived in a bubble. It was work, my children, spirituality. That's all I knew. Right. So I once um, they got older and I started trying to relate to people, I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of strange because I was like, um, I'm used to watching SpongeBob and doing all this kind of stuff and planning birthday parties. I don't know what y'all do now. Like as an adult, I don't know how to do that with y'all. So I had to implement myself and change with that. So it's, it is a different thing when it comes to women than men. And it is, you know, mm -hmm. single life women are out there. I mean, I don't know what their life is really like. I mean, right. I have, I do have friends that are divorced and, and they're single and they're out, you know, at wine tastings and, and parties and all that stuff. I'm at home with my kid. And, I'm and, at home with hear, my child. I hear what you say. I hear what and you that's say. why I have to date someone on the West Coast. Because I need to <laughs> my, my ass at home most right. of the time. And it's like, here's my schedule. This is when I can fit you in, buddy. <laughs> and, and, and I hear what you say when you say that, um, you know, you, 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 you have to hold the men accountable. Um, you know, to, in, with raising the kids. And I, I, I mean, in, in my, with my situation, I was, I was waiting to be accountable to see the kids. My divorce was set up, but with the visitation, I had limited visitation. I could only see my daughter on, on, on um, the summertime. That was it. She had, you know, basically all the other holidays to see um, our son. But um, I was only, and, and now till this day, my relationship with my daughter has been strained. And it, that's because I was only able to spend, summer was only what, a couple weeks? Like, you know, like, like four or five weeks. That was it. That was it. You know, I was the only time I was allowed to spend with my daughter. So we're, we're you know, mostly dads and daughters are real, you know, have that bond. We, we do, but at the same time, we don't because I still don't know her as much and i wish i did but it it wasn't on me i was willing to have her at any point in time 
it was always a battle to get them to come visit me or to get them here with me or have them here together. I went through hell trying to just, you know, see my poor child. And it, it, it was nuts for my, my side of it. I was willing to be a great dad, you know. But with that said, too, um, Regan, and only because I, I know this, you're in a, a position now in a situation now where your children, your children from that first marriage, they're grown, they're adults. Right. And, and, you know, our, my nephew is doing great. And for my niece, um, it, it, that bond is a two way street. Mm hmm. You know, it, it, it's a two-way street. And you, as the dad, you've always had the open arms. And so has Pam. Pam has been amazing and wonderful because there's never a time she has ever turned her back on these children. She has always been that, you know, stepmom that has stepped in and been the mom and been there. And so for my niece, I feel it's important for her to actually make that step. Like you can't just keep saying, well, it's because of, you know, 10 years ago, I don't have a relationship with you. So right, let's right, just right. get stuck in the 10 years. Mm -hmm. You got to move forward and progress. And that's the only way right. you're going to, she, she's got the rest of her life and she's got the rest of your life to now make those, those great memories in those times. Every day is a, a new yep. day and a new yep, yep. memory and a new thought. Yep. So and, and we can work on that, definitely. Absolutely. Man, look, look, check this out. Fuck them kids. <laughs> man, let me, uh, oh, for real, look, I'm gonna let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And this, this is the thing that, because they get older, and I'm glad you, you mentioned that, Doc. These kids yeah. get older, okay? And and they become, you know, intelligent little life forms down here walking around, you know, on Earth. You know? <laughs> life forms. So, but, they experience the same thing you experience, except they was children. And as they get older, you know, yeah, they're going to have some, you know, little ill will, whatever, because, you know, the poison has been put into them. But at some point, common sense have to sink in, that's you right. know, and, right. and that's my problem with these kids. Mm -hmm. You know, don't come to me about something that you have already know is just now sinking in. It's too late, damn it. You cut yeah. out the will. Right. You cut out the way. I've been telling your goofy ass the whole time. You don't want to listen to me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you, oh Lord, I can, I'm gonna write a book on this shit. Man, these kids today, <laughs> these kids today, man, this especially this generation, man, and God, you know, my sons, man. Oh my god, my sons are wonderful. Because my sons, I, I don't know what it is. You know, girls and boys are so different. They're just so different. And my son's mother. You know, she's still like that witch from Snow White, okay? She's still that witch from Snow White. And my <laughs> sons, they 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 saw it when they was younger because she was just evil, man. And she's still evil. And I hope she see this shit. She's evil as shit, and I don't like her. So she's evil. Now, my daughter's mother, right? Right. This was a different kind of evil, okay? This was like that evil from Stranger Things. Dang. Okay? That dark evil. It, even when you can't see it, it's fucking <laughs> there. It's there, right? It's I got there. you. And <laughs> she caused such a gap in me and my daughter's relationship. Me and my daughter, we we have a good relationship. It's like I'm like I'm like I get to pronounce your name right, Regan. It's Regan. <laughs> it's like that, and but we 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 you know she took me out for my birthday. We talk on the phone, right? And you know we we've had our ups and downs. And some some truths have come out, and she's saying them truths, and she's come to me, mm -hmm. and we talked about it. But I'll be sitting here thinking, I've been telling you this for years, right? And you didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. You believed your mother. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never given you anything. I never shown you anything that was close to being anywhere near the truth of what your mother said. I've never. You have no evidence, no proof. Right. As they get older, this is what I want these kids to do. My man, my man Joe was talking about it. Stop being fucking stupid. Right. Stop being fuck. Open up your eyes. Take a look at who's really in your corner. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm I, I fall back. Well, right. kids these days, and 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 this is just my my own experience, not from my own personal child, but just being an educator for 13 years. You know, kids are manipulative. Yes. These days. Yes. 
they are manipulative and kids these days are getting into all sorts of shenanigans mm -hmm. the shenanigans that we were not allowed to get into because we would get our ass whooped in a heartbeat in the yeah. middle of the store don't matter who was there mm -hmm. these kids now everything is a manipulation i mean i sit in in parent teacher conferences and the kids are like well you know you you don't show me any kind of love and all that stuff mm -mm. what are you talking about mm. you're sitting here with like the, the best of clothes the best of shoes you've got a tv in your room all this stuff and what are you saying child like TV, what are you talking about table 42 right. inch tv yeah cell phone and these kids, yep. it's anything now to do something deranged. Yep. You know, let me go uh, vape. Oh, it's because my mom said something, something. Oh, I've got daddy issues. But let me no, go wait. I, I, no, oh, sorry. No. I need this weed in my life because my, I'm getting parent stress. Because I'll yeah. tell you this much. I have one child, one girl, and... Don't come to me about you got daddy issues, honey. I've already experienced your daddy and his issues. You don't have no damn daddy issues. Okay, uh, your daddy is alive. He is walking around. Right. He is a grown man. You have no daddy issues. Don't come and talk to me about that because I will beat that shit right out of you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Like we are not, and that's the problem. And these kids know how to manipulate parents. And this is the this is the world that we live in now. And it's like, oh, I, you know, I, we have kids show up. They're all their 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 hair is green today. Oh, okay. Well, why? Oh, well, you know, my mom. Oh. Oh well, my mom! Yeah. Right. Really? Get over it. Get over and and, and it, there's no age on it. The right. manipulative okay. thing. No, because yeah. you got grown kids playing both sides. Yep. Playing mm -hmm. both the grown kids yep. playing both. So, so the stuff know. Regan and I went through. Yep. We should be. We should be goth. We should have purple hair. Well, right. Well, Pam's got purple hair. Yeah, she do. <laughs> it's for Ravens. And she even yeah, she's got Ravens. And they got eaten by the Patriots. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> and that was, that was <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> yeah, that would do. But it's like you know they, you know we could sit around and talk about that and talk about woe is me and yeah. that's my life and hey, not you know where's I, I tell you what it it it's it just me and her we're, we're the only two kids right but. Sometimes I wish we had more siblings so we could get lost in the crowd. <laughs> so <laughs> the focus was too easy. It was just two of us. It was like, shit, it's only the both of us. We're just going to get it whooped regardless. <laughs> and sometimes we actually feel like we're the parents. Right. It was parents. crazy. Right. Who actually, you know, think that they're so grown, they can't even listen to us. But we're like, hey, well, mm. it, it yep. is what it is. Yeah. So it's well, with that, let's we we could probably wrap it up because we went a little a little above our time. So savvy, yeah. so about the ego shit up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we gonna bring that up next. We gonna bring that up next Tuesday. I ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> All right, savvy, you can start it up or wrap it up. So, um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Lamont Elliott. Yeah, my um my client. Um, he has a movie coming out. Um. This Friday, guys, this Friday is called Guns and Graham. Guns and um, Graham. It's at AMC um, Theaters mm -hmm. this um, Friday. It's the um, premiere. So please go out and check that out. They probably still have tickets on Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite, Guns and Graham, and purchase his tickets. Also, um, I support like I said, <laughs> yeah, that too. Also, um, I had to move my show. Um, that was December the 5th. Now we had to move it to March the 13th of next year. So right. I'm still working and planning on that. Um, what else? What else I got going on? Oh, I have a one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't mention this last week. I have a one-on-one -on -one, um, podcast that I do. Right. Um, I do it once a month and it's called Savvy Events Corner. So I'll be filming next Saturday, yeah, next Sunday from I think 12 to one, uh, we do like a whole hour and we pre-record it and then we post it to the Good Vibes um, um, station yeah. on YouTube. Right. So it's called Savvy's Corner, so please check that out. Please support Looking forward me. to that one. 
Um, I have some other stuff going on, but right now I just can't think about it. Detroit you know, um, it's always something. And then once again, I, I'm here with these guys every Tuesday. We change the time from seven to eight. Yep, from six to seven. No, seven to eight. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean to tell? Yeah, yeah. Seven p.m. Right, I got you. Whatever she said. Yeah. <laughs> The woman's always right. The woman's always right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all I got, though. All right, Mom, what you got? Nothing. Uh, nothing, nothing. All my projects on hold, thanks to COVID. Right. There's no need of me telling y'all about it. Y'all don't remember this shit anyway, so. <laughs> you know, just, just be on standby for for everything else, you know. All right. And Dr. Dr. Gayadine, what you got going on in your life? What any projects you got coming up? What's going on with the kids at school? What you got I'm going on? Trying to get through, like, j just get through the the rest of the year uh, safe. Um, our our students have been back on campus, which has been a huge liability. Our numbers are going up. Although, mm. um, as I said, our governor seems to put the blinders on and act as if it's not happening because it's gone. And um, it's, it's pretty scary because we live in um, a, a no mask mandate state. So it is scary. We also live in a retirement state. So with that, we just, we're just trying to stay safe and we probably might go back. I'm, I'm very excited for, our, for having Auntie Kamala in the White House and, and Uncle Joe. And it, it's going to be an exciting 2021. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still here with, you know, Trini Spice FM. What's your favorite radio station? Um, bringing you Caribbean music, Christmas Caribbean music right now. We're bringing that parang and all that stuff. So tune on in. You know, you find it on your Alexa devices. Um, just enable Trini Spice FM in your Alexa skill store. You could find the app free. On, on, you know, Apple Store and your Google Play. Um, Moan, you want to wrap it up? Yes, yes. Hey, for anybody as gamers out there, Call of Duty came out last week. If you want to play with your boy, check me out. Tougher to you, 365. T-U-F-F-E-R-D-E-N-U, 365. For any gamers out there, I will bust your ass. Uh, thank you for tuning in this week and supporting us uh, the last couple of years. And please continue to support us. Check, out us, check us out on YouTube. Just look up GVTV and put in season and it'll pop up even easier for you. Uh, but once again, thank you. Good Vibes Television. We out. Thank you for coming out, yo. Bye. Bye.